Good afternoon. Welcome to the presentation. Thank you all for coming. Let's begin. I'm here today to introduce to you Integration Energy, a recently formed limited liability corporation. We stand for zero waste and perpetual results. The landscape you see before you is one of our investment properties that I'm going to show you shortly. We are Bradley Layton. There's a picture of me from a couple of years ago receiving the John Raffato for Business Award at the University of Montana. B.D. Erickson, a leader and veteran of the renewable energy industry, giving one of his many motivational speeches um, on commission of the likes of Elon Musk, owner of Solar City. Patrick Brown, veteran of the biomass industry with a unique biofuel that I'm also, that you'll see in front of you as well. Brian Jackson, longtime member of Idaho Power. You can see Brian here atop a wind turbine. And if uh, you haven't heard of him, he holds the record for one of the fastest and largest wind farm installations in the world, completing in nine months what it would typically take a company three years to go to do in Nome, Alaska. Mike Holacek is our chief scientific officer here in front of one of the many biofermentation technologies that he oversees. Ann Robinson, longtime and founder, longtime member and founder of Treasure State Bank in Montana, and Monica Trunell, our chief legal officer, who is the attorney for energy consumers in the state of Montana. I'm the PhD, I'm the CEO of the company. Patrick is our chief operating officer. Mike is our chief science officer, as I just mentioned. Brian Jackson, who is also a licensed professional engineer, as am I, an MBA, as well as a certified energy manager, is our chief technical officer. P.D. Erickson here with me today is our chief marketing officer. Ann Robbins is our chief financial officer. And Monica Trinell is our chief legal officer. Dr. Steve Running shared the Nobel Prize with Al Gore in 2007 for his work on climate change, looking at having taken some of the first satellite data of our browning forests and disappearing glaciers. Keegan Eisenstadt, very accomplished international carbon trader. Gloria Fulara, one of the founders of the International Biochar Initiative, is also part of our group. Steve Corrick, whose father Ernie Corrick was the regional president of Champion International, one of the largest hardwood harvesters and forest products manufacturers in the United States, if not the world. Dr. Marie Corio, uh, here to my right, also extremely f experienced in the art of negotiation and financial models necessary to pull off the projects at the scale I'm about to show you. John Lennon, our local compost effort, who will help us tremendously as, as we navigate the collection, processing, and distribution of our many biological products. And last but not least, Julie Keyes, uh, regional, forest servicer, re regional Forest Service Officer for Region 1 of the U.S. Forest Service in the U.S. And these are just the ones that, uh, these are just the highlights, a few that I've chosen to show you. Integration Energy is a fully integrated, large-scale biochar and organic food production company with a 100% renewable energy base. We are food, we are fuel, we are fertilizer, we are fusion, we are forever. The crops that you see in front of you are well known to the Pacific Northwest. You see barley, you see the honeyberry, which you also have sitting in front of you for your enjoyment. Sorry I didn't bring any beer today. Maybe we'll go enjoy some of that later as a, as a group. Japanese markets for this are very strong. They're grown in Canada and we have a unique relationship 
with one of the PhDs who developed a special strain that grows extraordinarily well in our part of the country. The fuel that you see here, this is a special blend that's currently running at a plant at a paper mill in Wisconsin. It uses wood that is unusable for other purposes as well as post-consumer waste plastics with a very high energy, energy content I'll be showing you shortly as well. The fertilizer that you see in the lower right hand corner is biochar. Currently has a one billion dollar global economy and that's expected to double in the next couple of years. Fusion as you know, is how our sun operates, and what you see here are solar panels, and if you've been paying attention to the news lately, you also know that uh, solar has reached grid parity with the fossil fuels, and there's no sign of it slowing down in the near future. We are the future of sustainability. What you see here in front of you is not a movie scene, but an actual installation that we have currently running in the town of Whitefish, Montana. Mike Holacek, one of our partners, is the founder of the company that built this, designed and built it. Uh, unfortunately, this particular facility you see burned to the ground, however, with, um, with the original plans and their insurance, they were able to very quickly replicate it, which is exactly what we're going to do on the properties I'm going to show you. We call this middle technology the octopus. It brings in sunlight, just regular sunlight, a specially designed dome, biodome. Right at the center is what you'll see is the, is the octopus. Eight legs, each of which pulls from a set of tanks where you see algae. This is something that our competitors are also looking into for carbon sequestration. And we feel that we are way out in front of them, having been in this field for nearly a decade. From the octopus, the algae, a well-known biofuel, moves into what's known as the buffalo, where the long-chain fatty acids from the algae are digested anaerobically, meaning they make methane with a special blend of bacteria that we have. That then heads, these gases then head off to the dragon, which you see here, that actually forms the biochar. And as I mentioned, this is a $1 billion industry expected to double in the next five to six years. We believe that we can tackle five, perhaps 10% of the market share within our five-year horizon. So what we're seeking from you is financial partnership. We're looking for anywhere between $100 and $150 million to build several complementary organic food, carbon fertilizer, biofuel, and renewable energy parks. The four technologies that you see right in front of you with a 60% ROI by year five, and a much greater ROI if you stick with us longer than that. Here's our magic. We bring in biomass from the forests, low consumer hydrocarbon waste, moves through our unique process we make, as I said, carbon fertilizer right in front of you, biofuels, and other commodities, many of which we'll discuss later after the meeting, to revitalize depleted soil, becoming a big problem in this country right now, and generating renewable energy with a very low pollution con footprint. We're actually taking carbon from the atmosphere and putting it back in the ground, if you can believe it. So. Who are our clients and customers, and what does that economic model look like? So at the top, our clients are foresters, tribes, the U.S. forester, ranchers, and the like, anybody with excess biomass. So next time you come out to Montana, I recommend you visit sometime in the summer to see exactly what I'm talking about. These forest fires that you hear about the news, they are, they are real. They happen. And so with our special relationship with Dr. Running, you expect to address that and get this nasty, hazardous biofuel out of the forest and put it to work for us. So with that, Integration Energy Waste Recover pulls in plastics, even the plastics that you see in these little bags, along with woody biomass. And just today I was walking along 92nd Avenue and there's a whole pile of it, lots of Christmas trees sitting there right ready to go into our model. For money, we will 
compete directly with the landfill models of yesteryear to bring these waste biomass and waste plastics into our special set of technologies. What we do with them along the bottom are remanufacture them into, as I mentioned, food, fuel, and fertilizer. And again, these are all commodities that, that our clients and customers pay for. So, here's the magic. What you see in front of you is the outline of one of our many plants that we expect to build. We've been bringing waste plastics. These are a well-known site that you'll see on both coasts being sent to, typically to Africa and Asia for manufacturing. As I mentioned, we have a current plant that can actually take this and turn it into energy right here in an EPA-approved manner. Forest biomass, after the beetle kill, of which the boxes that are sitting in front of you are ground up. Anything that's left over from these processes then becomes a woody biomass, as well as waste. Um, and there are many states in the country who have currently banned food waste in the landfills. So we feel like we're at just the right point to take advantage of all this organic matter that's required for our various processes. These come into the plant, are turned into food in our acres of greenhouses, some of which we already have, some of which we recently acquired, and many of which we plan to acquire within the next year or two with your assistance. Fertilizer, again, that's the biochar that you also see in front of you, turning these clay-like, sandy, drought-infested soils back into the rich black soil that you typically see in the Midwest, where I'm from or biofuels, switching away from the fracking, switching away from the coal mining into a clean burning, low ash, high energy content energy pellet that you see in front of you in the lower left. How do we do that? With fusion. The sun has been burning for over four billion years. There's enough sunlight hitting planet Earth every hour to power the entire civilization for an entire year with a combination of solar, wind, and geothermal, as well as an advanced battery that's also made in the state of Montana. We will capture that energy and run our plants. So, where are we? As you saw earlier, uh, we are already at Flathead Lake, a very pristine landscape where we will concentrate mainly on organic foods, and ecological restoration. Idaho, where we have several private landowners, where we'll focus on generating our own renewable energy and growing organic food. We just closed a couple really nice, um, just closed a couple really nice Ten to twenty thousand dollar deals there with, through through our, through Brian Jackson, Pablo Montana. This is halfway between Missoula and Whitefish, where the background slide on that first slide with the uh, the greenhouse I showed you is located. This is a former lumber mill, currently owned by Warehouser. This will be ground zero, if you will, for the startup of our operations, where all of these technologies come together a harmonious whole. Coal Strip, as you also may have heard from the news, is planned to shut down due to not meeting environmental regulations as well as not being able to meet its economic obligations to its shareholders due to the very low cost of natural gas these days. This is where we'll start our co-firing of the power pellets, build solar farms, as well as other renewable energy technologies. So, here are some of our projections. The numbers that you see on the left are in millions of dollars. The numbers that you see on the bottom are years. I've color-coded each of our four commodities, fertilizer, food, fuel, and food fusion by their color. Year one is our startup year. Year two, if all goes according to plan, we'll actually produce somewhere between 10 and 20 million dollars worth of this biochar fertilizer. Overall, the, the food, the honeyberry, takes a while to grow. 
but by year five, we expect to be on the order of uh, between 20 and $30 million of income with 1,000 or so acres that we plan to cultivate over the next five years. The fuel and the fusion are not as lucrative, but they form our base. And these, we feel, are very important because they're taking otherwise wasted commodities, keeping carbon from going into the atmosphere, keeping plastics from flowing into the landfill, and keeping these large, vast arrays of Montana countryside from going to waste, making electricity from sunlight, making electricity and heat from these resources that are easily at our disposal. So here's a little breakdown by property. At Pablo, our primary commodity is going to be the fertilizer, the biochar that you see in front of you. We've got a unique opportunity to partner with the Salish and Kootenai tribes. We have a letter here stating as much. We're also going to grow on the order of 20 acres of the hascaps. That's what you see as the foods. This makes up a significant portion of our income from organic farming. Um, at Pablo, we will be consuming, not producing, the biofuels. And we'll also have a substantial solar farm there as well. Moving on to Coal Strip, which is on the eastern side of the state, with partners we currently have in place. We'll still produce some of the fertilizer, not as much. Uh, we'll mainly focus on fuel production. So we currently have enough biofuels in place to last for 10, maybe 20 years with agreements we have in place with our ranchers. And we've also got a nice letter from a coal provider saying that he is interested in co-firing with biofuels. We also plan to put in a large solar array, thus the income from, from the fusion you see in green. Where are the markets? Our markets are farmers wishing to improve their properties through the production of biochar. Our clients are municipalities who are moving away from the landfilling of yesteryear where foods go into the landfills. We will take that and use it to enhance the biochar into an actual fertilizer, or the raw char into an actual fertilizer. Landowners as well. We've got some very unique opportunities right now with landowners looking to take their properties and produce income rather than spending time mowing it and maintaining it. The, the organic farming practices we have maintain those and enhance their value beyond what they currently are. So, where are the markets? As we know, energy security is frequently in the news. With our solar farms, we're putting land that otherwise would go to waste into full production for making electricity plan to bring back the jobs in forestry, agriculture, and mining that we've seen on the decline over the last decade or so. We're going to reduce fossil fuel dependency, thus limiting our susceptibility to the volatile fossil fuel markets. One of our plans is actually to buy a suite of electric vehicles, namely the Teslas, and there are a growing number of charging stations in and around western Montana where we'll do that. We're going to lower our CO2 emissions. Uh, as we well know, Northwestern Energy itself is looking to price carbon emissions into their models, so we're hoping to be ahead of that as well, all while increasing food quality and supply in Montana and abroad. Well, who are our competitors in, this in, the, in these? Who are our competitors in these spaces? One is big agriculture. Monsanto, as you know, has their own unique model for genetically engineering seeds to the point where the farmers that purchase their products then become more or less on a, on a treadmill that they cannot get off of. Monsanto has genetically engineered a lot of their seeds so that they have to be reseeded every year. We do not operate those, by those practices. We, pra we practice organic farming at a large scale. And that's, a, as you also know, a growing market. Our other competitors are big energy. ExxonMobil, in fact, just launched their own carbon capture campaign. If you've been watching the news lately with our models, we've been there for 10 years. British Petroleum is another one. And some of the conversations I've had with these oil executives, once in a while, they're interested in renewable energies, but typically they're still on the old fossil fuel train unwilling, or maybe even in some cases, unwilling to get off. With our new integration energy company being formed, 
we feel like we're already out ahead of some of these big competitors. Who are our clients and customers? Well, in the food realm, there's Champion. The University of Montana already purchases some of our food. They're in western Montana. Local restaurants are always looking for locally grown food. Japan also is a large consumer of the honeyberry, which you see in front of you. Fertilizer. Got a nice letter from Wakefield, one of the nation's leaders in biochar fertilizer sales. Cool Planet, another one. Simplot and Mountain West, both in Montana, who share portions of the $700 million fertilizer market that we plan to be in the next two to three years, with your help. Fuels, Puget Sound Electric and Portland General Electric have already said that they are no longer going to purchase electricity from fossil fuels. That's where we come in with our fossil fuel-free energy production. Northwestern Energy is a, is a long-standing partner as well, having funded us on our own solar PV trainer installation. Harden Generating and Rosebud Generating are also interested in purchasing our biofuels. On the fusion side, we've got the Mission Mountain Co-op, our, our own company, which will consume a substantial portion of our renewable energy, Puget Sound Electric, Flathead Valley, and the Missoula Electric Co-op are all initial partners in our part of the country. So what do our timelines look like? In year one, we're going to acquire properties. Year two, we'll install equipment. Year three, looking to finalize our initial sales. By year four, we'll hit full production. And by year five, you'll see some of the numbers that I was showing you on our projections earlier. We already have this property in place, Whitefish, where we're producing biochar on the order of a couple tons per day. We hope to hit 100 tons per year by year five. Bitterroot Valley Greens, also down in the greenhouse. And yes, those are greenhouses. And yes, those are real mountains. It's not, uh, it's not a Photoshop. 55,000 square feet under a series of roofs. This is an another model that we're replicating on the properties that I showed you previously. So with that, I'd like to take any questions and um, open it for discussion. Thank you.